I write teachers need grammar. That needs to be more a part of teacher education. To teach, we got to communicate to someone else, obviously. That's what a teacher does. It's part of education. And education, when we look at human history, wisdom, animals in general, education fundamentally is about preparing the young, the youth, for adult life. That's the essence of it. Then we've got the question of what is human life? What's human nature? What's the nature of the world? What's important? What do we need training in? There's going to be different answers based on different philosophies. The Spartans, the Nazis, the communists, the Renaissance, the ancient Greeks, in um, different Greeks, like, of course, in Sparta, they are Greeks, obviously, but um, Athens and so on, Egypt, different places. Um, if we look at human history, things in general, see what humans are. There's a lot of things we need to develop, but the most important thing we need to train, if we think about what's underlying everything we do, what's critical in human survival, what makes us human, it's reasoning, thinking, because that's an aspect of our consciousness. We're talking about distinctively human consciousness, and obviously consciousness underlies everything we do. When we move, when we engage in fitness, we need to be aware of where we are in moving through our environment, whether it's ecological, physical, or social. It's still an environment we've got to move through. We've got to know the nature of the things we're dealing with, the individual things, cause-effect relationships. So reasoning must be developed. That's the fundamental thing. That's number one. Everything else is secondary. A lot of things we have to do as humans, obviously, um, we need to develop manners, social behavior, fitness, ideas about diet and nutrition and things like that to live a good human life. Um, you know, and we need good ideas about diet and fitness, what's appropriate to a human that should be dug into. It's not just convention or what we think is that way, what we want to believe is not opinion. It's what's actually the case. But for education, the key thing to do is develop one's ability to think, as I say, because that underlies so much of what we do as humans, distinctively in a human life. Um, even if we want to dig a ditch, we got to have a tool. How do we do it? What's the technique? Why? Things like that. Or some people think, oh, they just work out. It's just a brute muscle thing. Not. Um, to train physical fitness effectively. It takes a lot of knowledge and understanding and science about how things work and why. Um, there's, like, take Bruce Lee. Um, some people think he was a martial artist. Oh, he just goes around fights. He just got, not, he was into philosophy. He knew it was important to be the total fighter you had to be mental and physical. It took mental and physical prowess and expertise. He knew that. Abraham Lincoln knew that. He had both, Abraham Lincoln, mental and physical prowess. Um, he dug into Euclid's elements to make himself a better thinker, memorized all the proofs. He knew that was the one thing that would help him demonstrate things, which he needed to do to be a good lawyer. Um, helped him be a good thinker and reasoner, which underlied his ability to be a good politician, to write good speeches, to speak well, to be a good lawyer, to communicate well. That's the one thing he focused on and he developed that helped in all these different areas. Um, Bruce Lee, too. So there are some examples. It's not just like, oh, pure fighting and muscle or whatever. Um, and People who want to be seemingly just cerebral are better off when they 
exercise in a fitness. It comes up in the book Spark by John Brady, for example. Or why was it that Sherlock Holmes was an expert boxer? Um, you read the real Sherlock Holmes stuff, and the fact that he was a champion boxer and he trained in boxing is brought up. Um, just because he's also known for his powers of thought, observation, induction, and he's known for deduction, does not mean he was not physically fit. He was well-rounded. Um, so it's like Leonardo da Vinci. But we need all these different things to develop as a human. Um, and reasoning underlies these things, so it should be part of education. That's what it's about. Them to do that well, to communicate, we need language and grammar. Some people report they can think maybe in images, but that's very limited. Can you think about epistemology in images? I don't think so. Or someone might think about some problem in biology or physics in images in a limited way, but can you communicate that to someone else? I don't think so. Can you write up a scientific or paper? I don't think so. Um, can you relate that to something in physics to other areas in physics and to biology and to logic and thinking skills? No. We need some means to do that. It's not mere images. We need some kind of code. We need to code our thoughts so we can connect all these different things. Um, no one thought begins and ends. Be able to express it well. Communicate it effectively and efficiently to ourselves and to other people. So it takes language, and to do language well, we need grammar. Teachers communicate things to students. That's part of it. If you're going to get the youth and train them, as a lot of animals do and as we do, and if you want to focus on what's essential, thinking skills, developing the ability to think, to see key things get to the essence of an issue as Abraham Lincoln could do. To think about fundamental deep things as Galileo, Aristotle, and um, Einstein could do. To be immersed in reality and get great discoveries and have persistence as Marie Curie, Madame Curie and Jane Goodall did. We need a commitment to truth we need language, we need thought, we need to see observations and retain them, and put them together and hold them with a word or something. We need something that we're able to retain like that. So that's what language does. It helps us retain things, it gives us a code to think on our own. Think, not think, yeah. Um, interesting, I guess I'm tired. Weird TH there. But we gotta communicate it to students as animals do when they train the youth for adult life. You gotta pass on the survival skills, the things a student needs. That's what we do. And we gotta be able to do it well, communicate it well, efficiently and effectively, as I say, get to the essence of an issue, immerse yourself in something, train students to do that. So we need language. Teachers should be trained in basic grammar. We should all know basic sentence diagramming to be able to convey something, as I say, to someone else, to help students develop and to become an adult, to be good at life. And when you, we train them in that well, they're able to express them, learn to like do the same thing. They get things well. They're more clear on learning and communicating and teaching others, then they'll be able to do it better. If we need to do that. Everybody has to be like a teacher, and a student in some role or other, to some extent, through life. At work, dealing with children, dealing with each other where one person knows more than someone else, we're still equal as adults, but then one can teach the other without any loss. Unfortunately, some don't get that. You see that you go to certain things and you're teaching a certain area, and the people who know it think they're all like superior, which is like loony cakes. Um, that's one thing people need to work on too. Different topic for discussion. But um, we need grammar, as I say, so we can put our thoughts together. 
word problems, writing them, understanding them. That's one thing I need to teach. Grammar, language, how to put thoughts together. Some people think they're good in English, but I've seen they can understand word problems. That shows me some kind of deficiency because what they have a problem with is not the math, but putting the things together um, grammatically and in language. So it would help people do things in physics, in chemistry, in algebra, in calculus, in geometry. It would help people teach it better, write it better, and then on the other side, the students understand it better. Um, so then people could say things in different ways more clearly. Maybe a teacher could say something spontaneously on the spot, trying to explain something and realize they can put it better and do it later on, right away, the next day, um, write something up. But because reasoning is such an important part of human life, underlying so much we do. Um, and because language is a part of that, it's so critical to rational thinking, conceptual thought, to think on our own, to communicate to other people. We need to know how to do it, how to put thoughts together, how to use language, how to use grammar. We need basic grammar to communicate the thoughts effectively and efficiently, as I say. Um, and then other issues would come in, of course, some logic, word choice, diction, but on a basic level, sentence diagramming and grammar is essential and should be part of all teacher training. All teachers should know how to diagram basic sentences because that means putting thoughts, putting ideas together to make a thought so they're clear in their own mind and they convey something to someone else. That's what teaching's about. Grammar is getting to the core of teaching, to the core of communicating knowledge to help, a, to help the youth be ready for adult life. So they've got ideas and thoughts they need to be practical so they can live and thrive. They know what's in the world. They have methods for thinking well. And they've had years of training of being around good grammar so they can even without studying some grammar explicitly, they would have, some of that would have become second nature. It would be like, become part of them, just like when we eat food. So let's please improve education and teaching by having grammar and teacher education. There should be like workshops to keep it going. I could help teach sentence diagramming and grammar. I would love to help it, you know, because it's not just teaching it as such, but why? What is grammar? It's like a part of logic. We need that kind of philosophic perspective, a good philosophic perspective, not some like trashy perspective like Wittgenstein or something, but a good perspective to know why it's important, how it relates to thinking, how it's like a little tool of survival, how it relates to, or how we could use it, how it relates to physics and chemistry and history, and accounting and stuff like that. Um, that's the kind of thinking we need in education. I'm kind of exerting a little bit. I'm a little tired. So again, I can help or maybe get you in touch with um, someone who could help more. But let's please have grammar in education so students can understand better. It'll, education and learning will be communicated more effectively and efficiently they'll enjoy it and they'll learn grammar better and they'll be able to communicate on their own better. Then the most important thing, the end goal, they will live a better adult lives. That's what it's about. Peace. Let's do it.